Uh, I'd like to continue with uh, this education, but it, uh, this is a bit technical, I think. Um, so it's about a seven-step method which we came up around two years ago, and we're still developing it. So we really hope for some comments and feedback on, um, about this, and especially from you who are working in the Wayne's curriculum or learning methods. So, first of all, um, I come from a small city in uh, in central Java, it's uh, right there, the island of Java, and um, for, for, for you who have been in Jogja, it's around three hours uh, by train from Jogja. So, and we have also have a big volcano, which is now also erupting, <laughs> so um, yeah, we pray that it doesn't cough too much. <laughs> yeah, this, is, uh, this is the view from our main building of the university in Brumokurgo. Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, briefly tell about the background, why we came up with this method. So, we started to teach bioethics in uh, Sudirman, or Utsud, we call it, in Utsud, since 2005. Uh, we had a blog called Bioethics and Health Law. Um, but at that time, uh, it was mainly about uh, Code of Ethics, Indonesian Medical Code of Ethics and health law, so they were mainly, um, the lectures were mainly about the, the articles in the code of ethics and in the health law. Uh, so the lecturers were main, uh, mostly doctors, medical doctors, which had a major in health law. Uh, the methods used were mainly lectures, big class lectures, and only a few uh, small book discussion or we call EDL, sorry. So since 2007, we had a small bioethics team, which uh, yeah, well, three of us are here now. We now have um, five or six members, and we added some uh, more materials in the BHL blog. We had some basic more principles and also some ethical issues in healthcare. Uh, we also kind of changed the lectures to interactive lectures. We had some movies and um, uh, more discussions in the class classrooms, and then we had we wanted to have more small group discussions uh, with each group uh, containing this of ten students. And then in just recently, uh, this semester we had a major curriculum revision, including our bioethics blog. So uh, this will be explained more by later by my colleague Amiko after this. Yeah, uh, yeah. like maybe also all of you here, we have, we have so many problems and challenges in, uh, in Indonesia and especially in our uh, university. Uh, we have no standardized bioethics curriculum in Indonesia. This is, I think, a, a big problem because uh, I think since five years ago or a couple of years ago, we have a national examination for physicians, and bioethics was included in that examination. I think this is doesn't make sense because we don't we don't yet have a standardized curriculum, meaning that students uh, outside of Java mostly who are still developing their um, who are not yet into bioethics will also need to do this examination when, and they have no lectures in bioethics beforehand. So that's a big problem, I think. Um, and we also still have different perceptions on what is ethics, bioethics. Uh, people get mixed up with etiquette. Uh, when we say ethics, it's etika in Indonesia. And etika also means etiquette, perceived as etiquette. Um, people also only think of Sometimes also only about code of ethics. So when they say is it ethical or unethical, they like, uh, look up. We have to look up in the code of ethics or something. And also law. Uh, they also perceive it as some always some kind of malpractice or something. Um, yeah. We need some time also till now to adjust or get used to the open or uh, critical thinking or openness in this, in this discussion because uh, like many of you also know maybe in medical education there's this like hierarchical, very hierarchical system 
and also in, even in our culture, in Japanese culture, it, there, there also is a hierarchical system where people are not that open to, uh, yes, yeah, speak up or uh, yeah, express their ideas. And also the question of when to teach bioethics in medical school, especially. Uh, many say that um, we should give bioethics later on in the clinic or just before the clinic, but we think it's we personally think it's um, better to give it as early as possible. So, um, learning methods, yeah, of course we have a lack of trained lecturers in bioethics, and moreover, there are only few lecturers interested in bioethics. So I'll come to this about, this is uh, also about the PBL uh, method. Yeah, and previously, uh, students previously used some cases from the UNESCO, um, UNESCO materials or WHO, uh, but students and lecturers or tutor, uh, tutors wanted real case scenarios, so we had to do some survey and studies on uh, what ethical issues or cases are actually, are actually uh, there. So we had we did a study in 2010 in our hospital about what ethical issues uh, are um, have been. Uh, faced by the doctors and nurses. And we now also have some studies with uh, students on uh, consent, uh, delivering bad news, and uh, brain death, perception of brain death. So I think it's a way of having some more and more information uh, what to teach and how to deal with the, um, the problems in, in, our, in our setting. And assessment. And this is a big problem also because we have a big number of students. We have 120 to 50 well, yeah, students and we only have like 50 or 60 active lecturers uh, on site. So it's a bit difficult if you want to do assessment using um, say um, essays or or oral oral exam. We need more of more examiners to do that while we also have other duties and tests in our other department, so it's a bit difficult to do a really nice assessment. So we're, we're not satisfied until now uh, what we have, we're doing in, in Unsud. Yeah, so these are the general learning objectives we have for our students. Um, so they should be able to recognize and distinguish an ethical issue from other issues. And then how they they need to, they should be able to identify an ethical issue in medicine. So during my time, I thought there was no problem. <laughs> I just graduated from medical school, and um, later on, I, I realized that there was so much problem there. Uh, so they should be able to identify ethical issues in healthcare, and to reason about those ethical issues, and also they have to know about some principles of bioethics, and to how to balance these principles and also provide rational justification for their ethical decisions. Okay, um, so previously we used some methods for ethical case discussions. Uh, the most famous, I think, maybe is the seven jump approach from Maastricht. We did not want to compete with this, me with this method because it's also seven, but it just, just happened that we came up with seven steps. Uh, so this is the, uh, the, the previous method we used in uh, small group discussions, and we also we changed also to we tried also to use um, guided questions like like we have in the UNESCO or WHO case studies where we where we point out the questions and just have to answer those questions. Um, yeah, we also tried the paradigm of clinical ethics for box approach from Johnson and Siegler. Um, there are also other methods that we, which we did not use, but um, yeah, here's some evaluation we have made for the previous methods we used. So there are always kind of problem there. Uh, so the seven job method is um, problematic with tutors who are not familiar with bioethics, and uh, most often we leave out the two steps, yeah, three steps. Uh, for the second meeting, so that we said, okay, this is probably not too uh, good to use for bioethics. Uh, the guided questions were quite easy for both students and tutors, but 
Uh, the students do not practice how to identify the, the issue. So the issue is there, we just ask uh, how, how to, um, uh, how, how, we ask, just ask the how to, uh, to discuss that issue. Uh, and the four box paradigm was quite good, but it was difficult for non-clinical cases because we also had some environmental uh, ethics uh, case and also some with the health system, and it was a bit difficult uh, if it was not concerning a, a certain patient. Um, it's also a bit difficult for undergraduate teaching, especially for the first year where they don't, they don't have yet enough um, knowledge about the biomedical sciences. So, in 2010, we did an evaluation on what, what method is uh, most favorable among students, and they said it was PPL. Uh, they, they were very happy with PPL, and especially since it was followed by a panel discussion at the end of the week, where uh, all the groups meet together, and there was uh, all the, um, all the, all the, uh, le the, le the lecturers there, so they can be, People know, the students know the differences between the groups, what, what, the, what the ideas were, were and, and they can also ask the, um, yeah, the experts for us there. So, so we thought that we, we still have to stick with this method, but what kind of method would be best? So then we came up with, a, with this our step and step, step method. This is the um, first version um, because it validated that we, we've revised that to a second version. So the first thing is that this is similar to the second job method. It's clarification of terms and context. Um, I'll just go through this briefly. Okay. So um, the first step is the chance to for students to clarify specific terms uh, from the case. This might be some scientific term, medical, uh, etc. And also to add some information related to the scenario or the case. And then second step is that they need to identify what ethical problems they perceive in that case. So this can be many uh, that they come up with. And they should write all the ideas they come up with. It's kind of like brainstorming or something. So students can come up with maybe a six or eight or problems, eight problems, but they should write it all down. Um, and then the third step is they should explain why they, they consider it as an ethical problem. Uh, because sometimes they come up with, okay, so this is a medical problem, it's pure medical or something. So uh, they, this is also still brainstorming. So we ask the previous student on why they think that, they, that uh, the ethical issue they came up with is an ethical issue. Um, uh, in this step, they can also group up uh, similar problems, which is actually maybe the same problem, but uh, explained in different words. So then they come up with uh, certain, uh, a number of ethical problems. And the fourth step is, this is the most important one, or the most um, time-consuming one. This is, uh, how do you see the problems from different perspectives? So then, uh, the students will focus on each ethical issue which have been agreed or stated in the first previous step, and it will be discussed more deeply and thoroughly. Um, they will discuss different values, norms, or principles, uh, which is related to that case, and uh, they will also practice viewing each problem from different persons and, and, and perspectives. Um, yeah, they might uh, play uh, some, they have some role play in this case. Um, and in this step, it is possible that they will eliminate certain uh, number of one of the problems that is that they realize is not an ethical problem actually. So um, then they come up with usually fewer ethical problems there. Yeah, uh, this is some kind of uh, confirmation on the previous step. It was it was planned to be like that. Um, so this is kind of uh, seeing it from different aspects. It could be psycholo psychological or social or cultural aspect. Um, yeah, and it, this might overlap. We realized that this might overlap with the previous step, um, but still we thought it was important for them to identify um, certain aspects there. 
Okay. And the sixth step is about legal aspects. We put this at the kind of at the end because students were very easy to uh, it was very easy for them to go to legal aspects. Uh, in the beginning of our advice teaching, when we had this case discussion, discussion and we asked them what is, uh, what do you think is the ethical issue or what do you think about this case, and they like, uh, immediately opened their code of ethics and their health law books and they said, oh, this is not ethics, it's about health law. So we, we realized that it's easier for them to, um, to memorize the black and white matter, like it's law or code of ethics is much easier. So we put that at the end. But still, still it's important to, for them to realize that their solutions maybe are not, um, uh, are not possible to do because of uh, the legal aspects. And at the end, uh, we want them to come up with some alternative solutions for, this, for the problems they have uh, found. Uh, this method does not focus on problem solving. That's that's the difference with, with clinical ethics. Because we want students just to uh, practice how to uh, reason and identify ethical issues. But in the seventh step, they usually come up with uh, many interesting uh, alternatives for problem solving. And, but it's not necessary for them to come up with one, one single best solution. So we did uh, we did an evaluation of this method. We did we did a focus group discussion, and we found that uh, facilitators or tutors feel uncertain about ethical issues. Most of the tutors uh, are medical doctors, which are not uh, familiar with bioethics. So it, we had some briefing beforehand. We had we had a guided guided. Um, we have a guidance for tutors, uh, but still they feel they're not sort of, they don't feel confident about being a facilitators in that discussion. And um, they said they more they need more detailed guide uh, for for to for the discussion. Uh, and uh, students and tutors also felt that steps three, four, and five are all overlap were overlapping. And um, uh, we, also felt, we also felt that it, they need some one closing step, one final step for uh, to conclude the discussion, which was lesson learned. For the, they wanted them to know what lessons they have learned from that discussion or that case. So then we revised, we did some revision to this method. We um, uh, we, we, we deleted the fifth step which was kind of overlapping with the fourth, and we added one more step at the end. And this was the, this is the second version of the method. So, yeah, we, we added this final step, which was what, what are the lessons learned from this case. So this is more, very important to reflect on what lessons the student have learned from the case discussion itself, the process itself. Or the, or the case, and it might involve it may involve multiple and various lessons from students' perspectives. So this step needs some uh, sufficient time for tutors also to uh, trigger you know the uh, students' um, reflection on the, on the on the discussion. So we did an, a second evaluation of the method, and there were still some problems. Uh, they said they then said. Um, I think it's more time for this method, uh, and there was still some confusion on what what is an ethical issue. So there were suggestions to change the question to what problems we see in the case instead of what ethical problems you see in this case, because it was kind of, kind of frightening for facilitators or students to have to identify ethical problems um, because they thought, what, why if it's not an ethical problem? So they thought why not change it to what problems you see in this case, so it's like general problems. Um, and then step three uh, was considered overlapping with the previous step. Uh, students like to identify the ethical issue and then uh, also immediately reason why they think it's an ethical issue. So they said why not merge those two. Um, and then uh, there was a 
Yeah, in step four, uh, some still felt confused uh, asking what perspective do you mean, which, per which perspective, the doctors, patient, or family. Uh, this is uh, this is this comes the role of the facilitator to uh, trigger uh, to trigger to the students that uh, so you can see from different perspectives. Um, interestingly, that the step six and seven students were less active. We don't know why, but they they said they, there was some uncertainty um, to come up with uh, what solution or or yeah. I, and they also felt hesitant uh, to to op to give their ideas, and also maybe some uh, the time was too limited that they felt the tutors had to hurry up and so on. Um, but the tutors felt it was easier to apply uh, overall to compared to the to the previous methods we used uh, in ethical case discussions. So. Um, Despite the difficulties, we still think that it's a, it is a simple structured approach for ethical case discussion for students, especially when you have, don't have too many uh, lectures in which are committed by your ethics. Um, and it also provides guidance for students to understand and practice the basic knowledge and skills in your ethics. And it focuses more on the learning process rather than uh, the problem solving process. So, yeah, thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, Amir first, please, and then Shabima. Two questions. Thank you very much for a very interesting, very useful presentation. I think you can learn from your experience of auditing your um, process that you've taken. PBL is a known, uh, very effective way of teaching uh, bioethics and taking it in two cases. However, it is in our experience, and it's what's been written about PDL, is that it is very operator dependent. So it depends largely on the facilitator, and you have um, pointed out to the weakness that you face in that area, and so have we. There are not as many teachers as you require for PBL to be. Now, if the tutor himself is unsure, uh, the direction of the PBL can go in any direction, in any way, uh, and it can completely derail. So, so we've been using PBL but cautiously, uh, de uh, depending on the strength of the person who's carrying them out. The other question that I wanted to ask, that was my experience, the question that I wanted to ask was, uh, many a times in our experience, our discussion stops at the, what, what is perceived to be what religion says about that particular problem. So you, you're dealing with a case of abortion, for instance, termination of pregnancy, whatever medical reason. However, <clears throat> the discussion is going on, but they say, okay, but my religion says this, and then discussion stops. Where is the solution for you? Does that happen in your context? Because it doesn't, religion doesn't sh show up in any of your slides. So, so that was one, uh, one question. Yeah, uh, it, it would be very nice, maybe later, if you could share some cases that you use for my own experience. That would be later. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Shabbat Yes, we... Now we are most uh, more active in uh, choosing the like, facilitators for our block. Uh, we have the freedom to choose our, like, our, our, our tutors. And now we have more and more tutors which are interested in bioethics. And that's a good thing. Uh, but still, we still have the, uh, the problem of um, questions from students say, asking, we have uh, different opinions with our, with our fellow <coughs> students. So that's why at the end of the week, we have a panel discussion in a big classroom where the experts are experts related to the case are there, and we are also there. So, and these groups present present their findings and their discussion. So, it's this is what they like at the end. So they're a bit relieved on what uh, they have done. Uh, about religion, yes, we do have that problem. Uh, it is difficult, um, but um, during the panel session. We, uh, they will see that also the experts and their, their lecturers also have different opinions on that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's fine with us, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Shamima, 
please just yes, uh, thank you uh, uh, Amelia, for your uh, good presentation nice presentation and uh, you show that uh, the step-by-step uh, -step step guideline for the clinical concentration. Uh, I can say in my country there is clinical concentration, uh, consultation, uh, case discussion there, there, there is um, uh, in, uh, for the critical uh, cases only. And uh, in, in, in that cases, uh, they discuss about their previous knowledge, not the step-by-step -step, uh, any guideline there is in my country. Uh, still, uh, you show the theoretical uh, step guideline. Uh, is it uh, implemented in your country? Uh, is it going to... Uh, is it... Uh, is it there in your country to discuss case, uh, clinical case, uh, step by step, or it is still in theoretical position? Uh, you mean critical position? No, theoretical. It is theoretical. Okay. You know, in uh, in uh, Padova, Padova, you say in your presentation, there is the Padova uh, guidelines and the naming guidelines. They have the many uh, cases to discuss, but uh, in my country, uh, the critical cases only discusses, not all cases. Only little little cases are discusses in, in clean, for the clinical cases, and uh, they only uh, only uh, uh, proceed by their own. Uh, 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 all the experiences with the case consultation is going on. And I may say that if uh, anybody say it is, uh, we need to say this, stop. Like this. In our country, also uh, facing the same problem. And your cases, uh, is there any uh, step by step guidelines to discuss <coughs> clinical consultation? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, we actually have now some cases from our clinicians. So we had, uh, during, during our survey, we also collected some real cases which was in our hospital. So we wrote that case down and we discussed it with students. Um, this is, the discussion is for undergraduate students, so it's not for, it's not for the clinical phase, so it's for the undergraduate. Yeah, they have not been, they are not yet in the clinic. So that's why we use case scenarios from, from our, uh, from the lecturers, from, for our, for our clinicians in the hospital. So um, the nice thing is that uh, these are real cases and uh, during the, the panel discussion, the expert, the, the physician, the physician uh, is sometimes there, sometimes. We try them to come, but not, they are not, not, always, not always available, but when they are there, and if they, sometimes they are there, um, then they will tell the whole story, I mean, what they have done at the end and why they have done that that um, uh, uh, that why they have decided to do so. But this is interesting because students have come up with different ideas of uh, what might what can be done and why. But at the end, then they are told they are told by the physician themselves who is in that case what they have done and why they have done that. And this is very interesting to discuss with students. So they like it very much when it's a real case and we manage to uh, invite the real physician there. But in some cases, we, we it's not possible. Uh, they couldn't come, so. But still, we can still discuss it with them uh, openly and also. Uh, they now uh, understand that uh, it, uh, it's, it's, it's all right to have different opinions and uh, uh, or different views, so. Yeah. I, I think I missed one question from you. Yeah. <coughs>